What this discussion is all about it is not even primarily for us. It's for our children and our grandchildren because the effects will not occur for another 25 or 50 years that will, be, that will ripple through the economy because we are seeing changes. There is a paradigm shift in banking and in money that irrespective of what the Swiss referendum will decide is happening. It cannot be stopped, but it can be formulated. It can be woven properly. And that's really what we're trying to do in the midst of this change. We have gone from paper to electronic to what in the world is that? By the way, you'll, you'll find this very interesting. I'll, I'll talk about this right. That is actually the word digital. In I can't remember <laughs> what type style I used, but that's literally what came out. So paper money is what we've had for the last 400 years. I mean, I know, I know the Chinese had paper money thousands of years ago, but I'm, I'm talking about us here, all right? Uh, today, almost everything is electronic money. In the US, it's over 99%. Here in Switzerland, it's about 90%. Electronic money is bank money, giro geld, nicht? Um, money that is, that is in your account that is electronic. It is not paper money, it's not, it's not currency. And we are all going to that. What in the world does that mean? Is there relevance to what we're talking about here towards the future? As I said already, the decision isn't so much for today, the decision is for tomorrow. <clears throat> I formulated some questions and um, depending on what side of the debate you're on, uh, none of you will like all of these questions. You'll be happy to know I haven't sent these to anybody, okay? Because I didn't want anybody to get a leg up on anybody else, because you're going to disagree on some of the answers. And, and uh, hopefully the uh, questions will make uh, all of you here at the front sweat a little bit. Uh, these are some of the things that, as far as I'm concerned, that need to be answered. So for that future, for that paradigm shift, what is better, the current debt-based system or an equity-based system? And by the way, uh, Jordan, uh, you know, the, the chairman of the Swiss National Bank, just gave a talk 10 days ago, uh, very recently. So, and he used that, so I, I, didn't, I didn't dream this up. He used the term debt-based, all right? Because that's what we are. That's not what we live in. If you don't understand that, that'll be explained later on today. The, the Folgeld system says, let's stop that. And let's go on to an equity-based system. What in the world does that mean? This is a radical shift, all right? We need answers to that question. Uh, by the way, the, we're going to roll these through later on. I'm not going to talk about these, uh, but when, they, when we have the major discussion at the end, they'll be rolled through so you can ask questions that are relevant to some of this. Um, what is the real cost of money? We tend to use different words. I'm, I use visible and inherent. We tend to use real and nominal. That's, that's not what I'm talking about. The, first of all, we have a rate that is listed, and then we add or subtract inflation, so that's the difference between the nominal, nominal rate is the rate as shown, and the real rate is differential from inflation or deflation, right? That's not what I'm talking about here. I'm going way beyond that. We have economic crashes on a regular basis. That is part of the cost of money. Where is an analysis of that? I've never seen it. I've never seen it. That's, that's a true cost that we all bear because of the kind of money system that we've decided to have, all right? Where's the answer to that? Who pays for that? Who doesn't? If not, why not? In my mind, I'd like to know that, okay? Uh, how would this change in the fall gut system? Would it improve or would it not? I'd like to know that, all right? These are really simple questions, as you can tell. Yeah. By the way, there's no way these are all going to be answered here today, all right? But these are deeply philosophical questions. They're not just economic questions, okay? The whole thing of liquidity, the capacity for loans, the capacity for financing in different situations. It's really what liquidity is, all right? <clears throat> How is it going to be controlled? What are the advantages, disadvantages? Will, will it essentially be equal, or would the equity-based, the Folgeld system, squeeze the economy? That's what some people think. Well, would it or wouldn't it? Are there segments of the economy that we serve better or worse? Uh, seniorage. You will hear about seniorage. What in the world is this thing? This is a huge function within our financial system. We don't talk about it, okay? Um, who, are, who is getting that money right now? Uh, I'll, I'll give you a very, just, if you don't know what seniorage is, I'll help you. Seniorage is the difference between the value of money and the cost of producing it. So let's take a, a one franc note 
uh, uh, 10 franc notes. Uh, I don't think there are any one franc notes, okay? And um, uh, let, let's say it costs, you know, 10 centimes uh, rappen, yeah? uh, um das zu drucken. Then, then the seniorage is the difference between the 10 cents that it costs to produce it and the 10 francs, all right? So who, who in the world gets that today? Because we have a bunch of that money kicking around, especially electronic money, it costs virtually nothing to produce. So where in the world does that go? Is that good or not? Okay, well, why don't we ever talk about this from a political perspective? It's a huge part of our economics. Um, no, I'm not going to talk about it. This is, I just dreamed this up. I spoke at a conference just a couple of weeks ago. And, and in the spur of the moment, I dreamed all these attributes up. I figured this would be, this is kind of heaven on earth money. <laughs> I'm not sure any currency in the world fulfills every one of those, or perhaps it never will. But this is what I would like to dream towards. Okay? Um, wow, that, that's an unbelievable list. Um, anyway, and, and you'll see it later on. I don't want to talk about it. I don't have time to talk about it. Um, this is not a new subject. I'm giving you a, you know, this is a top down. Um, so, I, by the way, some of these dates are real. Some of these dates I just picked. For instance, I'm sorry, wrong button. Um, so, we had, I think, so we had 8,000 different kinds of currencies, and I just picked a year before that was all stabilized in the U.S., uh, eight, you know, it's not in the year 1850, it's, it's around that time. Every bank had the right to uh, print their own money, and they did, and it was all very local, and chaos ensued, okay? Um, in 1891, there was a referendum here, an Abstimmung, the same thing we're going to have on June the 10th, where it was decided that, that only the, the Bund, the central government, can create currency or facsimiles, that's an English word uh, that, that I simply used for money, I can't remember exactly what the, uh, but it's basically what it means. All right, the, the only they are allowed to produce that. Well, then in 1929, we had the stock market crash in the beginning of the Great Depression, okay? So as a result of that, the Chicago plan came out in 35. The Chicago plan and Folge is not the same thing. Things have changed in the last 100 years. We have learned things and the money system has changed. And so the Folge initiative and, and sort of sovereign money attempts to work through today's system, all right? Um, 1950, in spite of the fact that the Constitution says this is illegal, banks were doing it to a huge extent, in spite of the fact that the Constitution categorically said it's illegal. So guess what? In 1999, they simply changed the Constitution. You can now do what it is that you've been doing anyway for the last 50 or 60 years. And now if we have 2018, what's going to happen now? Okay. <clears throat> um, just a quick overview of the conference. We've got three sections. And then three, I'm just calling them synopses, overviews. So we, we've got the current monetary system as far as the sections, then people who are saying, whoops, saying, yes, I'm in favor of change. No, I'm not in favor of change, okay? This section is really, really important because if you, you don't understand how the current system works, none of this makes any sense. Um, and then the synopses, sorry about this, um, so David Bossart will start with, the, with respect to complexity, who's in charge, then Martin Wolf as to an overview of the global situation, and then at the end we have a long open discussion where we try to encapsulate what everybody has talked about.